most important plate in that tent is the China plate. Uh, our job has to be, again, to ensure that severe competition doesn't become confrontation. Uh, the way we go about that together is through a variety of different alliances, uh, some individually, such as the one with Japan, one with Korea, and great to see Japan and Korea uh, coming more closely together and resolving some of the issues. The world has transformed in a seismic way from one of benign globalization in which barriers to trade, investment, and capital flows were all going down and global trade was going up like that, to an era of renewed great power rivalries in which all of those barriers have been going up again and many other concerns. To me, the, the biggest short-term risk, the fact that the central banks have, I think, raised the interest rates too far, too fast, uh, the result is a threat to growth in 2024. The consequences of this election are, I think, enormous. But if you don't have a basic foundations in a agreed commitment to democracy, peaceful transition of power, truth, truth-telling institutions, you have no basis of a society functioning. The biggest risk for Japanese businesses is whether you know, we can evolve the people for the future. Clearly, the business leaders, including me, have to be very serious about, you know, how can Japan survive in the global competition without sufficient amount of talent? When you think about um, climate change, it's, not, it's no longer when, right, it's now. Um, and there's just been so many examples just in the last year that I think point to um, adaptation and resilience being something we need to actually deal with seriously, not just from a, you know, humanitarian perspective, but from an economic perspective and the potential to sort of disrupt um, major economies. On the issue of the environment, I think that again illustrates very cl um, clearly the tension about whether economics is going to trump politics or politics economic. Because, you know, in theory, we have the technology we need to slow, if not avert, climate change. And in theory, we have all the money we need to do that as well in the world. We have an enormous amount of money in private capital markets. Um, in practice, the question is whether we can get governments to deploy the money effectively or not, and also whether we can stop green tech becoming a point of not geopolitical collaboration, which people thought it would be the case 10 years ago, but geopolitical strategic um, competition. If I had one wish, I wish that Japan would stand up and speak more loudly on the world stage now. In the last few decades, Japan has often been very quiet. And as someone who lived in Japan for many years, um, you know, I've been keenly aware that there are many things that Japan has to teach the rest of the world. There are many things that don't work well in Japan. But right now, with Japan in such a critical geopolitical position, um, having such an important role in many supply chains and actually having a vision of companies and the social contract between business and society that's different from the West. I do hope that Japan over the next year will speak out loudly on issues ranging from ESG to climate change and the measures that have been taken there to questions around geopolitics um, and simply make its voice more loudly heard on the world stage. Even as we face the uncertainties and what we might weight differently in terms of where the macro risks and maybe some of the, the clear things that are you know ahead of us, it's clear to me that it really is about us. That's one of the both the challenges and the opportunities of democracies. We can't leave things to a dear leader, certainly in the election uh, that we all have upcoming. And it's not just in America. There are many elections uh, coming up, next coming up, uh, Korea, Japan at some point, and America as well. But I think that is why all of us are here in some ways to figure out how collectively we can look for that opportunity. And sometimes as we look at that scope of the 80 years of US-Japan history post-World War II, how can we learn from each other and make each other better?